Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Adobe Live. Uh, this is your weekday daily dose of inspirational content. And uh, my name is Joalem. I'm an independent creative of sorts. And Adobe have given me the reins to host the Monday midday session, which is kind of cool because I get to hang out with some of my greatest friends in the creative space. Today, I am joined with Kay Megaro. So please, Kay, introduce yourself. Uh, where you're from, where you're based, what's going on? Hi, Joe. Thank you for the intro. Thank you, Adobe, for having me today. Uh, my name is Kay Megaro. I'm an illustrator, artist, designer based in Brooklyn, but I'm originally from Tokyo, Japan. And I'm here to show you guys some stuff. <laughs> So the uh, the cool thing about all of this is we originally met at Adobe Max last year uh, in LA. And I still distinctly remember the evening when uh, we just, again, as with all things, hanging out, having drinks and whatever. And you showed me some of your work on your Instagram and my mind was blown. <laughs> I was Likewise. <laughs> completely shocked at how insanely talented you are um, and your illustration work and it's photorealistic. It's it's just incredible. So I'm really looking forward to to sharing your work with some other people and uh, going through some of your finished pieces and maybe hopefully we can see some uh, steps along the way on things. Um, so yeah, speaking of Adobe Max, obviously last week was all uh, maxed out with so many sessions. <laughs> I believe there are catch ups to be had on there, um, mm -hmm. various other things. And I can see in the chat there were people who were already um, excited to be back on the UK stream because I think it was a little bit of a a, a mind blown week um, for sessions. Uh, I don't yeah. know. Did you manage to catch many? Yeah, I was able to just stream everything. I'm not, just I just had a streaming all day, and I'll come, like just come through when I want to, and then all the sessions that I signed up for. So that was fun. How was it for you with the time uh, time difference and everything too? But. Yeah, I um. I got a little bit confused at first with some of the repeating mm -hmm. content because I, I saw oh, it in yeah, my calendar yeah. and then um, I was thinking like, ah, okay, this is this is quite an early early session. Um, and then I realized I'd like added the Japanese <laughs> streams for some of them um, <laughs> mm -hmm. that were then being repeated, but it actually worked out in my favor because I'm quite a night owl. So staying up late watching stuff was, was perfect. Um, me too. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, Kay, your your work is, um, if I remember rightly, is it's a fairly even mix between digital and analog, right? You do a lot of sketching mm -hmm. both on iPad and actual paper stock. Yeah, um, I actually prefer to start on pencil and just kind of build up. And mm -hmm. it's just, it's like a one process thing. So you could mess up and erase and it's just like a different feel from digital drawing. And I do yeah. like to incorporate that because um, into digital work because I'm too scared to go full in watercolor on it. Mm -hmm. And what if I mess up? They're just the consequences to the 60 hours of the drawing. So yeah. <laughs> um, I love mixing it. And I think that's why I love working with Adobe. I get to mix both worlds. Mm -hmm. And it's just unlimited, the options and the things you can do. Do you have a, to, mm -hmm. is there a particular like process that you, you find more comfortable to just jump straight in? So I know for me, if I'm editing video, I, I have mm -hmm. to designate, uh, you know, a number of hours just to mentally prepare myself that today is an editing day. Do you find that you're able to just pick up and get going or do you, no. do you have to set aside? I have to, every morning, I literally have to work out. Um, and right after that, I have to steam the floors. I have to vacuum. I have this entire process. Up in, it's a build up until I kind of hype myself. Because yeah. I can't just sit down and start working. I don't know. What, like, some people can do that. And I don't know how you can do that. I really can't. I still can't after all these years. So I kind of really need to hype myself. And after like working on just getting all that work done, I clean my desk. So it's kind of like a blank sheet of paper every morning. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, now I'm ready. I have no more excuses. So all the excuses are gone. Like everything yeah. is clean. I have nothing to nitpick on. And I'm just like, I need to focus on myself. So it's very close to kind of meditating. I think you have to just really put your mind to it and just do it. Mm -hmm. And then 
it just comes through because sometimes you just sit down you force yourself and it comes out and sometimes it doesn't so it's it just you got to go with the day <laughs> yeah i think it it's crazy the links we'll go to 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 not do the work like we I'll tidy my desk mm -hmm. I'll tidy the room the whole flat I'll tidy next door's flat the hallway yep. like everything <laughs> <laughs> go out and do all the shopping mm -hmm. and then come back and think oh there's only one thing left on this list and that's actually putting pen to paper and making something mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah I know so are you able to is it kind of like stress relieving for you too to just get through like I don't know kind of have a process or just a schedule in a way I guess so yeah, I I don't really I don't really have it written out as such I think mm -hmm. it just um it just gets to a point of when my brain just stops thinking of other things to tidy up and clean um yeah but there there is a, a an element of comfort that that comes from it and then when you reach that point you're like okay now I'm ready to uh to open mm -hmm. up whatever it is and and have a look um yeah so I think uh, you've got your iPad connected, yes, right? Yes, I do. And uh, there are a number of different Adobe apps for drawing in. Um, which one do you find yourself in more frequently or mm -hmm. what's the, what do you spend your time in? Um, I spend more time in Fresco, but um, now that we have Photoshop, I think we should, we should check it out, right? Yeah, <laughs> On desktop. It. So yeah, um, here's... I guess a lot of people are very interested in how I layer things. Mm -hmm. So we could share that. Uh, Joe Allen, untidy desk. Yeah, is that even real? I don't even know why I ask you if you ever clean your space because you, um, you have like an immense, like <laughs> impeccable I mean, setup going on all the time. This is, this is maybe as messy as it ever gets um, when I've got second Mac setup here. Um, but otherwise, no, it's, it's always... Oh my... <laughs> it's always nice and... Nice and tidy, super clean. <laughs> I'm not sharing my desk space right now. <laughs> I'm pretty sure everyone's going to feel self-conscious after seeing yours, so maybe I can well, show mine. Actually, but... the one, <laughs> one thing I'm always envy of of, um, of your apartment is all your house plants. Um, yeah. You've got a complete family. It's like a, a mafia of plants. <laughs> I do have a gang going on. I've got a plant gang. I'm pretty sure a lot of quarantined artists or any type of creative has a whole jungle situation as well yeah. not just myself <laughs> so well, it oxidizes the brain it, it you know gets the creativity yes. flowing and thank you thank you for saying that because a lot of people are always like is it do you are you able to take care of all of them i'm like yes that's it's kind of part of my routine as well if the plants are dying i know that something in my schedule is off or something is really off in me so it's kind of like a good way to check in on my mental health as well. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's uh, let's have a look at this illustration oh, you've yeah. got, which is is just so incredible. I I need to find new adjectives to describe your work because <laughs> every <laughs> single post you put up, and even your stories when you you're sharing just the the process behind and. Uh, you do a lot of screenshots of the iPhone camera app, which shows the the facial recognition, which yes. is just the perfect way of saying, "Look how real this is." <laughs> it's <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, photorealism isn't. It's actually something not I strive for. It's just a technique that I learned over the years, and um, it was when I first started showing them online. Um, I was. I had like other ink drawings and more simplified drawings before, but those, I would post them, nobody would really react to them. And mm. I guess I wasn't pushing myself enough to wow people back mm. then. So I'm just like, all right, let's see what will wow people. And it was just photorealism, I think. It, the response was much bigger. So I'm like, okay, this is a cool tool that I can use or a technique mm. or skill that I've acquired. And I've just kind of just gone from there because originally I'm a designer. I'm not really an illustrator. I don't have a background in a lot of drawing. So it's all self-taught, figuring out as I go, yeah. figuring out social media, figuring out myself. There's just like a combination of figuring myself out in my work. So, yeah. so with the, so obviously this has got like some very graphic elements here with the, mm -hmm. the negative space and things, but yeah. do you, do you find yourself, um, still craving a lot of the 
design elements like the typography side of things and doing layouts and and that type yes. of stuff yes um i i do have a background in type so i love kerning i love setting type i just i think it's a whole balance thing that i'm really craving mm -hmm. so uh, with type 2 you can mix graphics with illustration and how do you make that work without making it too tacky or too you know you could be too something with if you mix two worlds so just having that perfect balance is and also i'm from japan so japan is everything is about balance and everything yeah. is about aesthetically pleasing but having a meaning beside behind everything so you have to have a story and a meaning so putting all that together is just um i guess my work so i love compiling something that's very classic and old school which is pencil graphite charcoal drawing and scanning them putting them into photoshop and you know adding these these stri like stripy graphics as kind of like my if i if i couldn't use typography then i'll use these stripes kind of mm -hmm. like a boom statement thing and then you can play with color and it's just endless so i just love playing around and yeah there's no very deep meaning behind a lot of things i do it's just really like figuring it out yeah and just being like oh okay and then realizing what the influences were behind that is interesting for me i think or and for everyone to see but yeah the uh japan note it's uh it kind of simultaneously 100 years in the past and 100 years in the future <laughs> it's just mixing everything together um mm -hmm. and I, I can totally see that in your work it it yeah it's so how would you how would you go about starting something like this like how many for one thing i know that this takes days mm -hmm. sometimes potentially weeks yeah. to make uh, let's, yeah, I'll just pull out the original where it really, really, really starts. So, classic. Here's a sketchbook. So like, just really, a really. This um, is like show your fun. show your homework and your work. I out. know, right? This is like show and tell right now, but Zoom and it's really awkward in a way. But <laughs> I'm gonna make this work for you guys. Let's see where to go. So yeah, um, I just. There's, uh, there's some comments in the chat already asking, are these mm -hmm. drawings and photos? <laughs> I can assure you they are full drawings. So here's the original drawing. Um, with the stripes here, you can see that I already um, kind of start to fill them in so I can get a feel of what it would look like if I put it mm -hmm. in Photoshop because just these stripes don't do it. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I like it. So I stopped filling in the stripes because I'm like, w I need to do this in Photoshop. What am I doing? Yeah. And <laughs> Yeah, and then um, I delete, kind of like, I just edit these, the messy lines out, and it turns into a whole different thing. So with my work, I kind of like that I have two results, or I can have like 3,000 results. Mm -hmm. So I have the original drawing, and then I have my other .psd files that I can add in. So yeah. <laughs> and then I'm sure you go through multiple versions, uh, and when you start to add color, that leads to all sorts um so how do you how do you layer these up like what's the what's the build process on this um and oh in my drawing or in photoshop or digital? in photoshop in photoshop it's um yeah i just drag the person in and i guess i center it <laughs> or however i want to place it and i would um, with a sketch that you saw earlier in my drawing, you saw the guidelines. So I would literally just trace sometimes and be like, mm -hmm. all right. And from there, um, I would alter the colors. So uh, I don't know. My process is very simple. So okay. maybe for everyone, this is really interesting. But for me, this is really like, oh, I just have a head here. Put the pink in the back or in the foreground and kind of play around with all the layers. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. And um, <laughs> do you do you work much with um, like obviously coming from the the layout and design aspect with mm -hmm. like guidelines and like how rigid are you to setting yourself a, a guide point and do you stick with it? Do you oh. find yourself getting distracted by that or I I I always think I'm going to stick to something and then just depending on my mood, I would literally change the whole composition or the concept. So sometimes I'll start with a drawing with something different meaning behind it. And then the next day I'll wake up and be like, no, 
that was that, that wasn't what I was trying to say. So I'll just mm -hmm. change it completely in digital. So um, when I upload my images on Instagram, I'll, I give kind of like two or three versions where one is very simplified. I do a hashtag less is more because I mm -hmm. do think there is a power in having just something very minimal, but just one boom image. And you don't really need to add all these elements in. But the next day I'll be like, I want to be really colorful today. I just going to like, going to add all this stuff. More is more. Lisa Frank, let's do it. So I just keep on adding. And then that's another image as more is more kind of thing. So I don't know. Um, it's really, I'm really just going as I live, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So with my client projects, obviously, we come up with a concept. But for my own work, especially recently with everything going on in the world, it's really hard to keep up one mood mm. or stay in like a good mindset. So it's kind of like figuring out, okay, today I'm a little feeling a little down. How do I add color into that? So it's kind of just yeah, you guys pretty much see like my mental health of the day. If I keep yeah. on adding stuff, it's, it's just how I'm feeling that day. So, yeah, definitely. And then what about and, um, if say you're say you're midway through a project and it's it's not quite working out, but you've invested so much time in it. Mm -hmm. Do you do you come to a point where sometimes you have to just, you know, cut ties and abandon a piece of work or do you just always power through and, and get something to a finished state? I usually try to power through for one day. I give myself a limited time to power through. And mm -hmm. then while powering through, I realize what why I can't be doing this, why I'm not in the mindset, why it's not working. And it's kind of like, because you can't just sit there and be mopey about it, right? We can't be like, oh, I wish it looked like this. Like, cause the image in your head is completely different than what mm. the execution is starting to look like. So you can either just sit around and be really depressed, like which I do a lot. Or sometimes I'm like, okay, let's just do this. Let's figure this out. I'm going to give myself three hours for this. And if I can't figure it out, I'm going to just stop being frustrated. I've already tried. So like just stop being hard on myself. And I think mm. like that's what a lot of creatives do is just like we are so hard on our own work that we just keep on thinking we can power through. But sometimes you need to be like, all right, I'm just going to time myself and give myself yeah. a limit. Like you need to give yourself homework or limits or something or else it just doesn't stop. We just spiral in our heads. Yeah. So if I can't figure it out within those three hours, I just sleep on it. And sometimes... I come back to something in three years or four years. So it's just, it's always nice to have a digital copy of it somewhere in your computer. And then one day, like, you'll think about that piece of work that you struggled and you'll be like, I'm going to finish that today. So this year has been a lot of that for me. I have so many unfinished drawings that this is why I'm using this notebook. I can kind of see what I all have to need to finish. And yeah, I just, I stop powering through. I try it once and if I fail, I give up and I just move on. Cause yeah. same with relationships, you can't force things. You're just not meant to be with certain things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How about you? Do you like struggle sometimes? Cause I'm pretty sure all your followers are like, Joe just gets it. But I know sometimes <laughs> you probably have days where you're just like. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you know? the last. Uh, the last year or two, it's been more and more difficult, I guess. Um, the amount of video projects that I have that just get cut because um, I'm going through it and I'm two two things come from it is one, like, why? What's the point in even making this? Why am I making this? Am I making this for me? <laughs> am I making this for someone else? Or I go through and I think, yeah, I, I could have done this better. And that's one of the difficult yeah. things with video work is that if you don't capture it in the moment at that time, trying to add it afterwards or fake it involves a whole, you know, extra dimension of time, essentially. Um, mm -hmm. Versus when I was doing a lot of my design work, I I can revisit things and that time in between of trying to solve a problem is less apparent. So I would say the last uh, year and a bit, probably 50% of the videos I plan to make never got published um which is a, a huge amount missed out um but i do think it 
means that the ones that I do publish, I'm mm -hmm. so much like um, so much happier for. So yeah, your heart in it. Yeah, it's just trying to mm -hmm. find it's again it's balance. Um, trying to get it yeah. to work. Um, mm -hmm. So um, so yeah, with your so this is obviously a uh, a scanned in piece. Uh, can we yeah. zoom in on the hair? I really want to see the, yeah. the detail. <laughs> Of course. How do how do you scan your work? Oh, I scan everything 750 and up. I don't go any more down. So okay. I recommend just going bigger, just get more information, the better. Pretty sure all designers are like, yes, more, better, bigger yep. files. <laughs> so that's um, why I gr I'm really grateful for my design background is that the knowledge for print mm -hmm. and just files and setting up. Because if I yeah. didn't, I would do everything in 75 DPI and like make everyone go crazy. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess, um, yeah, that, that technical aspect, it really mm -hmm. helps. Um, yeah. Is your, is your Photoshop frozen? Oh, I don't or? think it's not connected, perhaps. It should be connected. Yeah, we can we can just try a, a disconnect on that and re go. No worries about that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so Kay, one of your um, one of your sort of like tips and things that I I know you do, which I think is is fairly um, surprising to a lot of people, is your study of anatomy. Mm. You've got. <laughs> <laughs> multiple books right on yeah yeah on muscles um, and, and muscles and bones and animals and yeah it's, it's extended to animals at this point but um yeah i started studying anatomy because i never properly studied um in art school so and it's quarantine i have no excuse to not pursue what i want to know Mm -hmm. And the more knowledge, the better for me. I love just having a wide variety of things to know. It just me makes me feel secure about things. I don't know why. And so with um, anatomy, I started because I wanted to know what, how, like the balance of things, like why things look good and why things look off, especially with photorealism. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people would say like, I don't know why my work doesn't look real. And for me, I always thought it was just how you render things, but like, why do certain surfaces are, why are they darker? Why are they more lighter in certain spots? And when you really go down to that, you have to learn bone structure yeah. and how, um, it, how like the light literally hits the skull is why we shade certain things a certain way in certain angles. So, um, yeah, that's, that's where it started. And I originally, I started working out so I could see what muscles go where. So uh, when people ask me why I start working out like around April, it's it's really that. So I can see development. Like I'm a total nerd, to be honest. I love pursuing things like to the core. I'm not just going to yeah. just get into things. If I'm going to get into something, I'm very committed to it. So yeah, I think like that's that's where it comes from. <laughs> so yeah, it just became a like a study subject of yourself. Mm -hmm. Get to know muscle yeah. definition and and all sorts mm -hmm. it's similar to um so there's a lot of uh like games developers and designers that i've been watching lately and mm -hmm. the way that they are producing stuff for the next gen consoles and just next sort of um graphics representation and the way that light can be uh like shines through translucent areas of your skin and how like your the edge of your mm -hmm. nose for example and they can tell immediately when they see uh, a game or even a movie and the the artwork doesn't quite match up to reality because they've studied the way that skin cells reflect and reflect uh, light throughout things um, and it's just crazy that level of science that goes into making your art but it's it's how you stand out mm -hmm. it's how it's how you come across because as humans we look at things and we can tell mm -hmm. when it just doesn't look right when something's kind of a bit wrong um mm -hmm. perspective wise or or other um so yeah i think that's that's one area that that you've nailed um so well in your work 
Um, oh, thank you. If the uh, if the screen share is not working, perhaps we can. I don't know if Tim can add in your Instagram profile or something. Um, we can talk through some Ooh, of your work yes. on there. Yeah, I've been trying to for some reason. It's not working. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> no worries at all. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when we do have a moment, though, um, mm -hmm. perhaps we can add in the chat afterwards any book recommendations that you may have. Um, I know that might take a, a while on links on things. But. Yeah, I could totally make a list of all the books that I've been nerding out on. It might be helpful for some people who are studying anatomy or um, just people. This yeah. year, I haven't really been able to meet people, hence the studying myself or hence the studying the bones, I suppose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, oh. the um, the uh, the book recommendations, I think you recommended a grid book to me a few months back. Um, and I've been sort of flicking through that every once in a while. I've still uh, not actually produced yeah. something from it. Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, just uh, nerding out over grids and so all sorts good, right and... doesn't it feel good when it just looks good like, it's just mm -hmm. a feeling like it's a natural instinct that we all have i think and Definitely. even for type it's i don't know i love nerding out about stuff this yeah. like, stuff like this <laughs> <laughs> it could go on but okay so i think we've got your behance up on the screen um there's one particular print that I absolutely love. It's the the one on the top right. If we're able to share that one Texture with the one. <laughs> the latex leather trousers, whatever. This one to me, the light is is just incredible. This so was this done as a analog sketch originally? And yeah, then this is touched up. I in, didn't really. Yeah, I didn't really do much in Photoshop with this one. I added the like, the white lights that you might see, the highlights. Mm -hmm. um, I've added that in because I couldn't scan that in. But um, this is mostly charcoal, graphite, and pencil. So wow. very, very simple, actually. And is and... this based off of real life or...? Oh, yeah, it's based off of a photo that I okay. found, I think, on Pinterest or somewhere really random. And yeah. I was like, I've never, this is when I started to really pursue more textures, different, like you said, light surfaces. I was really interested in um, just drawing with this latex part. I actually didn't draw that much in. It's all just light reflecting and how yeah. you balance that out. And that was a, a very difficult task in the beginning, but. It was just fun figuring, it's all figuring out, just figuring like what works where and trial it's, and error. <laughs> it's just, it's mind blowing. It's it's honestly mind blowing that this has been drawn because it it is so, so realistic um, and it could so easily go wrong. Like one, one slip up in one area and you, you immediately <laughs> know this is a drawing, it's not a photo, but you don't have that. <laughs> You just you oh, just don't cool. have thank that. Thank you. Oh, I never heard. Thank you. <laughs> I love I love these compliments. Keep them coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, is this is like just a fun study for me. Um, I I don't think art schools teach you how to draw certain things. Mm -hmm. So it's really just like what you find interest in, like really wanting to pursue that, and nerding out on it, and just going for it. And then th midway through this drawing, I thought I was gonna. I thought I really just wanted to go. I wanted to drop it so bad. It was just so much to figure out. But yeah. once you kind of start to get it, it's just like, okay. It's like picking up, like getting up on a bike and just keep on going. And then yeah. of course there'll be hiccups here and there, but you just got to keep on going. You got to finish it. And then if you want to post it or not, that's really up to you. But <laughs> yeah. I think like certain things, I, this one was like a power through thing. Like I just kept, I, there's already a reference. I don't need to do anything. Just, I just need to show up for it was my thing. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. And you've also said before that some of your drawings are just made up, like just people mm -hmm. created. Um, which uh, which of those uh, might be? Yeah, um, if you, s I mean, if you keep on going. Oh, um, the Coca-Cola one with the Japanese 
girl. Yeah, that was a made up person. Just compiled all these different elements that I love and that remind me of home. Just like a modernized version of、um, just Japan. Because we all think of kimonos and all these very typical things. So I'm just、mm-hmm. like, how do we kind of elevate that? How do we make it less, I don't want to say tacky, but. How do we like make it more artsy or just、yeah. more approachable and and fun? Like, I always have to make it fun. It, if I、yeah. lose an element of fun, it's just I lose interest in it as well.、Mm-hmm. And it's very obvious with my work. If I have fun with something, it's obvious. If I don't, it's just I think it's a feeling. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if it will. It will fully translate for other people, but you yourself will will see it and realize, like, oh, this was, you know, that project.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, oh, that one. Yeah. And then you'll reflect. It's a good thing to go back to your own work and、mm-hmm. feel those things and reflect, like, why don't I like it? So you don't do it the next round. But yeah, yeah this one, I, it's a made up person. I just made, just literally put a bunch of elements together and. Just、Maybe、pull it out. I I do not、out. understand how it, like where and how does it just come out of your head and onto paper. I think everyone is jealous of that. I don't know. Just throw something at the page and um.、Uh, I don't know. It's I think it's like a digital collage in a way. It's kind of like creating a collage in your head and.、Mm-hmm. Um, I have a lot of references that I pull together, which、yeah. I, I'll be happy to show sometime as well. But、um, yeah,、and、it's just you, really like creating it. Do you find yourself drawn to particular paper stock? And if you were in,、uh, say, in fresco or in Photoshop, do you have、mm-hmm. digital examples of, of how you would start a piece, or do you change your paper halfway through? Um, no, actually, I actually in my digital work, I add a watercolor texture to it because a lot of people do get confused、um, if my work is digital or not, or if it's a photo sometimes, which I'm like, oh, thank you. It's <laughs> showing. <laughs> so I, but、um, there's just something about adding that paper texture and keeping that. And I lose a lot of that texture, which I use、um, a lot of watercolor and Bristol, Bristol t- paper. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of like a more heavy stock and kind of like a card. And you can see the bumps on it. And I love using it because the charcoal and graphite is, it catches so easily. And the blacks just look black on、uh, textured paper, personally.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, when I scan it, I do lose some of those elements. So I would re add like old, like those, the watercolor texture back in, which is probably. Unconventional and weird, but it works for me. So, yeah,、mm-hmm. nice, that's so cool. And would you,、um, would you feel comfortable having like the flexibility for someone else to change that? Like, imagine if, if you had a, a、mm-hmm. layered piece and then you, you sent it to、uh, a print company or a different brand, and they thought,、mm-hmm. Yeah, this is great, but we, we want to change that paper t-、uh, like texture to it. How How attached are you if brands or. Oh, I have a thing where I don't really get attached to my work.、Um, okay. Which is why I don't really like to display my own work as well. I don't know how people are with their own work.、Um, I really don't like to look at my own work all the time. It's, I'm dealing with it all the time. I don't need to see it like when I'm eating. <laughs> it's, just, it's too much. So,、um, I, yeah, I really. Don't get attached to my work, which is kind of weird too, because I kind of just I finish something and I'm just i m moved on. It's kind of like relationships. I keep on going back to relationships, but it's if it works, I like to linger on to things. But if it's done, I'm like, that was fun. That was cute. Let's go next. Or else I just don't evolve. I just keep like a lot of people just kind of stick to their old styles or specific styles, which is great. I think it's good to pursue that. But when you think you have a style and when you think this works for me, you kind of stop trying other things,、mm. which I've realized that I need to pursue other things. And looking out too much and looking too much externally is not good, but staying too internal and sticking to, oh, this worked for me before. It, yeah, it worked for you last year. How are you today? So、yeah. it's kind of like, 
I got to keep on just keep on going. So if my clients want to change something, maybe it looks better. Like I need to have an open mind. And if it doesn't, mm-hmm. I will literally be like, we're not doing that. We cannot do that. <laughs> like abort project now. Like we're not doing that. And usually and I have never had anyone um suggest something too crazy. So I've never had the problem. Fingers yeah. crossed. But yeah, is it weird for you for someone to come in midway through a project or um yeah, I I generally find that the the bigger the client, the easier they are to work with. Um because they they have a like an open understanding. Um but sometimes when I've worked on smaller briefs or projects and mm-hmm. especially if it's for a lower budget as well, um people really try and maximize because they they have an attachment <laughs> to it that they're they're paying and they think, well, you know, I'm paying for this I <laughs> I want to have control over some aspects and yes, I know yeah <laughs> it happens right <laughs> um, it does it does yeah, uh, yeah and you get it some does. interesting feedback and like mm-hmm. very very particular tweaks on things and you think okay let's mm-hmm. look at the bigger picture here um but yeah generally I I would much rather aim to work with bigger brands and um mm-hmm. and really sort of flex that creativity it's it's a, an odd shift how that happens but it's um mm-hmm. it's worth it to to work towards um speaking of brands what would you say is like a a dream collaboration of yours i know you've done some recent stuff with new balance oh, um and obviously you've done some adobe collaboration. things recently mhm dream collaboration i don't know for me personally uh, there's a lot of brands that i would of course love to work with i i honestly don't really turn down a lot of gigs because I like to work with different people who it makes me it makes me want to like it gets me out of my own style like I keep on going back to just having this one style thing it's I like to collaborate so I can have like a different fresh of air different source of just a different something to change my mindset and um when I work with a collab like when I collaborate it's not just about me it's about this brand so let's say if it's for new balance um i have to think about who buys new balance japan clothes like who wears it and i think i think about all the people the the younger um generation of what do they want to wear to what would they want to wear it's just like a lot going on rather than i want to draw this it's very simple mm-hmm. when it's just me but if it's a collaboration i get to think about all these other people because i draw people i love people that's the only really simple reason why i do it and if it's, it's i don't even really like to draw for myself anymore it's got to a point where i won't draw if like nobody really looked at my stuff it's mm. like i love it and it's very therapeutic but um it's more interesting when people interact with my work now yeah so um i would often when i do dream collaborations right before that i would ask my instagram followers on like a one of those Q&A things like what do you guys want to buy what do you guys want to see and then people will give me advice and I'm like okay this is good to know cuz it's not mm. just about me it's really about me and the brand as much as the brand would want to highlight me it's like no 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 you you guys are making this happen for me you're giving me this platform so how do i use my voice at the the biggest like to my best so mm. Yeah, but with dream brand, I don't know. I really don't have like a dream project right now. I think I'm okay. pretty happy with everything I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> well, it seems to be going very well. Um No, I don't know. There's a there's a question that. here. Have you have you ever animated your work? Um yes, I've been that's one thing I've turned down is um animating because I we tried once for a project. It was for L'Oreal, I think a couple mm-hmm. years ago. And I'm pretty sure it's out there in the world somewhere. I just don't even want to google it because I'm not proud of it. And <laughs> I didn't have a lot of control over the animation part, of course. I'm not an animator, and I really wanted to just work with the animator, let him or her do what they're good at. Cuz I don't want to dictate over something I'm not used mm-hmm. to or not I don't have any knowledge over but we I guess there was a communication problem and every frame I sent it just didn't work it just just didn't yeah. work so I think for me it wasn't my thing then and maybe the person I work with was just wasn't my person so hopefully maybe I'll get better at animating one day and then I'll work but for now no we're not yeah. we're not going to go down that path <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's tricky because the one of the difficult things with animation is there's so much time involved in producing a piece. And if that goes down the wrong sort of direction, then that's yeah. a lot of time in the wrong wrong way. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that can be very, very tricky. Uh, there's also mm. questions here about the new mm -hmm. Photoshop, uh, the neural filters. There's been so much discussion about this uh, mm. over the last yeah. week. Have you seen them? Mm -hmm. Or... No, I'm pretty sure I've seen them. I have not used them though. Um, I've not tried them yet myself either. Um, I've I've only tried the the sky swap, which I was freaking out over. I don't even have anything to do with skies, but I was just playing around with that, and I think that's about it with Photoshop on desktop. Yeah, for me so far. I'm sure those are eventually going to make their way um, mm -hmm. over to the iPad and other things if they haven't already. Actually, I'm not entirely yeah. sure um but yeah, yeah that would be uh that would be kind of cool likewise the um the behance live that is coming into the ipad ones uh i know we've had mm -hmm. some difficulty showing your ipad here today. <laughs> oh, i'm really so sorry <laughs> but um <laughs> try again yeah maybe uh in the future when um when the behance live uh starts growing we'll be able to get the uh the thing going up but if you want to try and load it up again yeah, um, I'm going to try again. We can do that. For the moment, we just got some of your work uh, flowing on the screen. Uh, Is I... Instagram better or Behance? Uh, Behance? Yeah, possibly. I mean, how up to date is your Behance? Mm, um, not too updated. Okay. So I think um, my Instagram would be the most updated place to go to. But yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, we won't be able to have that on there, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, website. Or your website, yeah. kmegaro.com uh, <laughs> Tim say in our ear, just... Uh, Navigating us. us. <laughs> <laughs> so your, your work, I've noticed, has more colour appearing lately. Um, yes. Is that a conscious decision? Um, yeah, it is. I actually, like I said before, I'm, I was very fixated on that style of having one color pop, um, with the stripes and such. It was great, but I just, I need to try different things and, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's just, and also the conscious decision is because I have Adobe Fresco with the unlimited of amounts of mess ups I can have and the control Z's we can do with everything. Um, that's that's why I've been pushing into color mm. and trying to change it up because we're all we need to we need to see different things we need to keep them evolving so yeah. well I guess um, another yeah. aspect as well is you've got a massive following uh, on Instagram so there is some sort of element of um, not that you would necessarily hold yourself to make what people want to see but there is an element of um, consciousness that there are a lot of people seeing your work. So changing things too much can potentially mm. force you down the wrong sort of rabbit hole. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. Changing, yeah, changing your content up too much, I guess, might, um, you might lose or you, or you might gain followers. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, the amount of times I think of, um, you know, a particular video idea and, and I think like, oh, mm -hmm. this this might not fit with my audience, but then you also mm -hmm. have to think, well, that audience is, you know, yes, it's a lot of people, it's a couple of hundred thousand, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not millions and there are mm -hmm. millions out there. So you could exactly. tap into and reach that larger mm -hmm. side of the audience um, that you just yeah. haven't met yet. Exactly. Um, um yeah, I have this. I had this project I did for this magazine called Man of the World. It's um, a high-end fashion men's magazine, and this was like 2013 or something. And I did a full-colored, uh, vintage-inspired piece. And recently, I had a client contact me about that from just seeing that one project I did. And I don't even know where. I think it's on Behance. If you look up Man of the World. Um, it's one of my rare full colored pieces. So when people find that and contact me being like, hey, we like that style. We love your original, like your usual thing too, but we love that too. Um, 
can you recreate that? It's kind of nice, like, oh, someone out there is watching your work. Like, you, mm. maybe you don't have it highlighted on top of your, you know, top 10 right now, but somewhere out there, some, your, something that you did that was, you kind of thought, mm, maybe that wasn't good. Is someone, is like, someone loves that. So we yeah. need to stop, I guess, with the numbers and likes we get and the engagement, num- like, percentages. We get a little in our heads and try to prioritize more likes. But truthfully, I think you need to know that, um, especially as somebody who creates content, um, you need to know what's going to be ahead in time. Like, yeah, and right now this is trendy. Will it be next year? Will it be yeah. in a week? Like, you need to know that trend three years or five years ahead of time, I think personally. And then, because so, so many projects that I'm like, yep, I did that like five years ago. Why is it now? Like, I don't want to yeah. be so cocky or anything, but it's kind of like, what? We did that like five years ago. Why is it trending now? So yeah. the thing is just be, to be aware of that. And yeah, this is the, the Man of the World um, project that I did. This is full color, full. It was very different. And to think that someone liked that, I'm like, okay, I just need to keep on pursuing different things and then somebody mm-hmm. will be watching. What, um, what color processing were you doing here? Is this, um, this is, um, I can't just... see it large enough, but hopefully it's just my, my window monitor is fairly small on it. But were you using, yeah. uh, watercolors or? Yeah, this is a color pencil, watercolor and Photoshop. So... Nice. The, la- the background is all layers uh, with clients. I always try to give them like a bazillion options so they don't um, make me fix something. I don't want to mm-hmm. like, it's kind of just like, here, here's a bunch of options. <laughs> here you go. Like, because people need to see it. Like, they don't believe it until they see it. Like, even yeah. though you have it created in your head, they don't know that. Like, they don't, and yeah. they don't fully trust you for that yet. So <laughs> it's like, they got to see it. So it's kind of like, yeah, you have a bunch of options ready. And then people just be like, oh, this one. And it's kind of like, okay, no revisions. Great. Like, this is this is really nice for both of us. <laughs> That's uh, it's definitely one of the biggest things I've learned over the years of when it comes to sharing even a first draft mm-hmm. is as much as in our minds, we can do a first draft and we can envision it. But unless you're going to make it look very rough, anything that's in between rough and sort of done, the client mm-hmm. struggles to see the the finished picture um Mm -hmm. so i when i was doing uh, a lot of digital design work for like websites and apps and things when it came to showing wireframes i always handed them i I never presented the a digital version because they would look at it Mm -hmm. and say yeah i just i don't know about the shade of gray and i'm thinking (laughs) this is a wireframe it's it's not gonna be gray this is just the outline yeah i know Um, and it it's so true. It happens so often. Um, so the the alternative is to, as you say, do loads of options mm-hmm. and share those, and and then it's like, well, you know, take your pick. Um, yeah, exactly. Or when you first submit a sketch, what I like to do is attach a PDF and have like a sh- like a reference sheet. Mm-hmm. Like, guys, don't worry. It's gonna look like this in the end. I know it looks like the jumbled sketches that um are on on there now, but um yeah it just they, they have to see it so yeah have and it's good being s- a designer for that yeah. that knowledge of like sourcing images and such yeah. yeah have you ever had the the sketch approved um or favorited over the actual final piece yes yes i've had okay. that and um i actually have a lot of times when people like the halfway process so it's mm-hmm. kind of like halfway fully drawn, halfway sketched out. And I've had a lot of projects that came out of that as a concept. They were like, we kind of like this half cyborg, half alien idea you did, which I'm like, I didn't do that, but sure, let's go with that. Like, it's just like, all right, that sounds fun. Let's just like ride with it. So. Yeah, this, um, mm-hmm. so what's going on here? Just looking on the screen, we've got like a, Kind of a, a wetsuit type. Yes, the <laughs> wetsuit going on, and that was a lot of a lot of a lot of drawing. I've never done anything like that before, so it was really difficult. But um, this is when I was um, I was really grateful for being able to draw textures 
Mm-hmm. So the fins that there's that matte black fin feeling. It's not shiny. It's in between. That's I think to know that and to get that feel and to get that on paper was my job because mm-hmm. this is it's for a fashion magazine as much as it is um a drawing I still want to no I don't want to sell the product to say but I still want the product to shine as it is yeah and yeah. but it can't be a photo so there's that very difficult fine line and yeah no it's uh it's, it's definitely a, a great balance of things but um mm-hmm. it's the the texture aspect is I don't know if you would um if you would specifically know that that's something that you you have a, a deep understanding of or if it's going back again to the the type of thing that we see it and we we sort of approve of it that it looks real as like realistic but we can't as viewers we can't understand mm-hmm. why uh in the same way that when someone looks at great photos and they think why why does this one look better than the other and it's because the perspectives mm. are correct or the highlights are uh a control they're not blown out um and i think the the texture element to your work is definitely one of those sort of secret sources um so how would you how would you say you're developing it further like what's what's your key focus in your in your drawing work at the moment oh i don't know what what am i focused on right now i want people to vote and that has been my underlying message throughout all my drawings <laughs> Yeah. Cuz but um yeah that's my only message recently. I'm just like vote. Hashtag #vote. Vote please mm-hmm. vote. Please vote. <laughs> If you live in America, especially please vote. So um I don't know. I'm sorry. Just, would you would you ever work on on bigger scale work? Um cuz you're quite often in like sketchbooks and things, but have you ever yeah. thought of like mural based? Actually, yeah. Done? Um I s- recently started to work larger and I'm working on a roll of paper so I can if I mess it up I'll just rip it off and just keep on going. And I think I posted something on Instagram recently. It's just like a body figure. And it was kind of fun drawing something that's almost life size. It's a little bit shrunk up, but mm-hmm. it was kind of just And also I put a mirror next to me so I can see how the light reflects on shoulders and such and When the light reflects on certain things, you don't need to draw it in. You actually just le- need to leave certain things out to make the other parts stand out, which I think that I guess that's highlights, right? And <laughs> just knowing what to fill in and what to not fill in. Yeah, yeah there's there's a so, graphic element to that as well though, because it can be quite stylized. Um yeah, it's like in some of yours where you've clearly missed body parts, but mm-hmm. the brain tells you what's there. Um, yeah, even sometimes, though it's not been drawn. Mhm. Like you don't need to with my beard guys. I don't draw face um the faces on purpose so you can have your own dream dude, you know? Like you can yeah. just imagine what the person is, but you can already tell what they kind of are. You get the essence of the person even without having to draw everything in, which mm-hmm. I find really interesting. And my stripes too. It just you it just stripes, but you can tell how the body is actually shaped. which yeah. I thought was interesting and it saves me time rather than having to draw the whole thing. Yeah, definitely. And it's a graphic element too. Yeah, I used to really enjoy uh life drawing. Um it was like a, a module in uh my graphic mm-hmm. design course and I did struggle a lot with faces early on and so often I would focus on, you know, all the extra elements like the shoulders, the arm and mm-hmm. kind of like the neck sort of muscles. Um and we would be at a time limit and then quite a few of my drawings i would end them with just a dot dot and a smile mm-hmm. <laughs> and that was my finished piece but that became like a bit of my style for my life drawings that you'd have this really detailed like collarbone structure and then the most basic of faces um, i really want to see this <laughs> i'll try and find an image i'm i'm sure i've got one saved somewhere i'll send it to you later but um yeah that was this like a a a way of not acknowledging mm-hmm. the fact that i struggled in facial features at the time um mm-hmm. and eventually i moved beyond it and you know the the joke wore off and uh <laughs> my lecturer is like we we need to get you uh, drawing faces this is not working 
<laughs> I mean, that's kind of good though, knowing your strengths and knowing what you you like what you're not really into is actually good. Then you can just start working on the mm -hmm. things that are really like you just are good at. Like if you're good at collarbones, keep on drawing collarbones and then just keep, yeah. keep doing the smiley faces, like whatever works. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um but I mean, I think that's a that's a great point to uh, to round this out because the one thing that you are incredibly talented at is drawing so please please Kay continue drawing <laughs> keep going keep sharing your work uh, and keep sharing your your studio as well there's um there's a lot of uh discussion in the chat on <laughs> admiring your studio uh, oh, we're only seeing you. a third of it here but the rest of it and, and your images um I always enjoy your stories and, and how you share so if, if you guys want to go and follow Kay um, make sure you do check out her Instagram and uh, your website and your Behance and all places over the internet. Um, and hopefully we'll be seeing your work around somewhere. Uh, yeah. So, Kay, thank you for joining today. Um, it's a shame mm -hmm. we couldn't get the uh, the iPad working yeah, properly. But, um, I know. You guys have to call me back again, I guess. <laughs> we, <laughs> we saw a lot of your work anyway, and it's it's just mind-blowing. Um, as thank I said you, before, we, it speaks for itself, but obviously we need to you know chat through it as well <laughs> i know i i uh next time we should like let's just draw together i want to see your smiley face i'm pretty sure all yeah. your fans want to see that too <laughs> so I'll, that'll um, be fun I'll, I'll practice and I'll, I'll brush up a little bit um yeah it's been a while since i've actually drawn some stuff but um yeah we definitely need to to work together and, and make something add in some type and, and other stuff i know right um, yeah <laughs> all the nerdy things we can add in <laughs> definitely so uh, speaking of the future sessions, uh, tomorrow we've got Sarah Coleman with the book club. We've got some uh, mural illustration on, when is that? Wednesday. Uh, and then Tim is hosting with Maddie and Tony, a spooky game show, which I'm unsure what that entails. Um, but I'm going to try and join in for that because that sounds like it could be fun. It, it really is the fun the spooky month after all so <laughs> uh, and likewise if you want to join us on discord um, we've got a discord channel for the uk and uh, you can join in the discussion if i find my um my life drawing with the smiley face i'll post it in there later today um i'll, I'll have a search for it all of my stuff is is archived and organized so i should be able to find it hopefully i bet they are i'm not surprised like they're archived it's... and organized <laughs> 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 uh so uh so yeah that uh that rounds out today's um session and uh i look forward to seeing you next week and beyond all right thanks for watching everyone and we'll catch you in the next one thank See you ya. everyone
Thank you.